Hello everyone! In this video I'll show you how I made the interactive snow for my game Astrocat and how you can set it up yourself. As always you can find all the files you need linked in the description. Let's look at the shader in steps. We start with a default plane, then we add tessellation for more detail, a vertex displacement from a noise texture, snow colors from a texture, lighting, a particles path that gets rendered to a render texture, then read this render texture and exclude the path from the earlier vertex displacement. We colorize the path, color the shadows, and finally add some sparkles. Okay, time for a closer look at all of these steps. I'm in Europe here, but my game is in built-in, so the files linked are for uh, both pipelines. The first step is tessellation. Now, in built-in, you can just add the tessellation include to your shader, and it'll handle everything for you. But for some reason, uh, this is not provided in URP, so you have to add your own. I've made a video on this before, so if you want to check that out, that's somewhere on the screen right now. Linked in the description, there is a HLSL file, which will do all of the tessellation stuff for you. Just a basic distance-based version, as you can see here. You can adjust the uh, max tessellation here. File looks like this. Um, it's all basic tessellation stuff apart from some stuff in here, in the varyings, and the uh, vertex function is inside of the tessellation file. And we'll be going back to this later. So the first real step is this little bit of vertex displacement on top that is based on a noise texture, and that is based on the world position so that it's not limited to the UVs of the plane it's on. As you can see here, it's a simple uh, texture lookup using the world position and a slider for the scale. And then we go down here and we push the vert vertices up using the normal as a guide with a basic slider for the general snow height. And then we use the snow noise with a weight slider so we can control how subtle or unsubtle the snow noise is. And back here we exclude the um, path from particles, uh, but we'll get into that later. The next step is basic coloring, which we do over here in the fragment shader, where we take the snow texture and project it world space again with another slider for the scale. The next step is lighting. Now for the built-in version, um, I use a surface shader, so the lighting is basically handled. But for URP, we need to add it ourselves. Over here, we grab the shadow coordinates using this function, transform world to shadow chord, using the world position. Then you gotta check if there are any shadows enabled, and then get the shadows from the main light. And for additional lights, you have to use a get additional light count, so you can see how many lights there are, and then loop over them and basically do the same thing, only using get additional light instead of get main light. So now we get to the render texture part. Uh, this interactor object has a child particle system that is on its own layer. And then we have a camera following the interactor here that is orthographic and, and outputs to a render texture right here. So if I hit play, you can see it is following the interactor. And the particles are not in the camera view, but they are written to the texture. Now in order to read the uh, texture in the right place, we need to create a sort of local UV to the interactor. So the uh, script that makes the camera follow the target interactor here will also send the interactor position to the shader. Have it here, underscore position. So in both the uh, fragment and the vertex function, 
we take this position, we subtract it from the uh, world position, and then we use the orthographic camera size to uh, make sure it's the right size, and then it needs a little bit of an offset to be in the center. And then you can just read the render texture using this UV and it'll be all in the right place. And then as you saw before, you can exclude the uh, path from the particles from the vertex displacement by basically inverting it. And the next step is reading the texture in the fragment shader to color in the path. And I'm just using a lerp here. Oh, here is the reading of the render texture. Uh, and by the way, this smooth step here is just to make sure that it doesn't bleed on the edges. Otherwise, if the particles were on the edge of the render texture, you get like really long streaks. So here we just lerp two colors over the effect. I've multiplied it with the effect here too, to give it a little bit more uh, depth. And then finally you lerp the gradient path with the actual snow texture and then you get a nice blending path effect. And then we have the colored shadows. Let's keep it blue. Um, and this is done by just taking the shadow, inverting it, and multiplying it with a color, and then just adding it to the original shadow. And then you can control how strong it is and what color it is. And there's one more step left, which is sparkles. And this is done just by using a very grainy noise texture, and then just using a step function to cut off everything but the brightest points in the texture. There are probably more accurate ways to make sparkles, but I kind of like how this looks, because if you add bloom to it, it looks like it's twinkling, even though it, it, it's not using the view direction in any way. So it kind of gives, it gives a nice sparkly effect, even though it's just the texture projected onto the world position again. So here it is, just using a sparkle texture on the world position with some scaling, and then we step through it to cut off all but the brightest sparkles, and then um, I'll make sure that it doesn't appear inside of the path because it can get a little bit stretched then, and just make it a little bit brighter, and that's it. If you're thinking that the path I just showed was uh, way more smooth than the one shown from my game, that's because it depends on your particle setup. The smooth path is the URP additive particle shader, and in my own game I use the Legacy Particles Additive Soft shader, which I have here now, which gives a more wonky path, as you can see. So if that's what you want, uh, just use different shader. Finally, I will show you how to set up this effect yourself. Uh, here I am in a new Unity project in Unity 2022.1.7 and URP version 13.1.8. Uh, so the effect works in this version, but it might not work in other versions or I might have to make some revisions. Uh, URP keeps changing and it's a bit of a nightmare for people who make tutorials. So at least it works in this version. So all I've done so far is drag in the uh, textures that I want to use and now we need to import all the files. In the description there are two post links, one for the URP version and one for the built-in version. And the posts look like this. This is the built-in version and this is the URP version which I'll be using right now. So we need the HLSL file, the shader file and the C Sharp script linked here. So open all of those up. So for the HLSL file, uh, copy the code. Then you need to go to your file explorer and create a basic text file. And change the extension. So it needs to be called snow tessellation. 
and then change the text to HLSL. It'll give you a warning, click yes. Now if you go back into Unity, you can see that it is recognized as a shader include. So we can open it up and paste in our code and then create a new shader file. It uh, doesn't matter which one. Call it Interactive Snow. Then copy the shader code. Open up the shader. And paste in the new code. Now it might complain that it can't find the um, HLSL file, so sometimes you need to re import this. And then it's fine. Finally, copy over the C -sharp file and create a new C -sharp script called Set Interactive Shader Effects. Start by creating a plane and a sphere which will act as the interactor. And then we need an orthographic camera that is pointing down, so set the X to 90. Set it to orthographic. Increase the size to like 20 or something. Um, make sure that the environment is set to solid color. So that the render texture we will be using will be completely black apart from the particles. And now we add the uh, set interactive shader effects script. And then we need to create a new render texture. I'll call it effects. Make sure it's a, it's a bit bigger than this, so uh, 1024. Then add this render texture to both the output texture and the RT slot of the uh, script. Then drag the sphere interactor to the target slot. And now we need to create a new layer for the particles. So go to layer, add new layer, um, RT effects. Then in your main camera, exclude this layer, so these particles won't show up in your game camera. In the orthographic camera, make sure that that's the only thing it's looking at. And then make a new material from our shader. Create material and drag it onto the plane. Add in your textures. And now just uh, play with the settings a little bit or just copy the ones I provided in the post. You may need to hit play to set the um, effects texture to the snow. As you can see, it'll jump up if I do this. Yeah, see, it looks a bit different now. Um, because by default, the texture will be completely gray, so it'll ignore certain parts of the effect. The only thing we need to do now is set up the particle, so create a particle effect as child of the sphere. And then set the starting speed to zero. The uh, lifetime will be how long the snow pass stays. So set it between uh, 10 and 15. Start size should be about the width of the uh, sphere with a little bit of variation. Make sure the simulation space is set to world. The emission, uh, turn off the rate over time and just set it to like 5 rate over distance. You can always play with all of these settings later. The shape should be just an edge because we don't want it to um, move too much. So set it to edge with a really small radius. 
Then we need a color over lifetime because the shader will only read uh, the green channel. So we need to set this to be pure green. And then fade over time. And then finally in render we need to set it to a horizontal billboard. And then we could change the uh, particles material. So if you want it to be a bit more wonky, create a new material. And then set it to legacy shaders, particles, additive soft. And choose the default particle texture. And then use that on the particles. And now we just need to set the particle system to use our special layer. And now when you hit play, uh, you should see a path forming in the snow. So the path is there, we just need to adjust some settings a little bit more. Let's add some objects so we can see the shadows. And some post-processing to make it a little bit prettier. There we go, that looks nice and soft. So that's basically it. Um, I hope you have fun with this effect and thanks for watching. For a nice overview of all of my posts and tutorials, check out my GitHub site. I've just renewed it and now you can search for topics and filter by categories.